part five chapter one section two of crime and punishment by fyodor dostoevsky translated by constance garnett recording by expatriate in bangor maine part five chapter one section two lebeziatnikov was enraged that's another slander he yelled it was not so at all that was all katerina ivanovna's invention for she did not understand and i never made love to sofya semyonova i was simply developing her entirely disinterestedly trying to rouse her to protest all i wanted was her protest and sofya semyonovna could not have remained here anyway have you asked her to join your community oh, you keep on laughing and very inappropriately allow me to tell you you don't understand there is no such role in a community the communities established that there should be no such roles in a community such a role is essentially transformed and what is stupid here is sensible there what under present conditions is unnatural becomes perfectly natural in the community it all depends on the environment it's all the environment and man himself is nothing and i am on good terms with sofia semyonovna to this day which is a proof that she never regarded me as having wronged her i am trying now to attract her to the community but on quite quite a different footing what are you laughing at we are trying to establish a community of our own a special one on a broader basis we have gone further in our convictions we rejoice more and meanwhile i am still developing sofia semyonovna she has a beautiful beautiful character and you take advantage of her fine character eh <laughs> no no oh no on the contrary oh on the contrary <laughs> a queer thing to say believe me why should i disguise it in fact i feel it strange myself how timid chaste and modern she is with me and you of course are developing her <laughs> uh, trying to prove to her that all that modesty is nonsense not at all not at all how coarsely how stupidly excuse me saying so you misunderstand the word development good heavens how crude you still are we are striving for the freedom of women and you have only one idea in your head setting aside the general question of chastity and feminine modesty as useless in themselves and indeed prejudices i fully accept her chastity with me because that's for her to decide of course if she were to tell me herself that she wanted me i should think myself very lucky because i like the girl very much but as it is no one has ever treated her more courteously than i with more respect for her dignity i wait in hopes that's all you would much better make her a present of something i bet you never thought of that you don't understand as i've told you already of course she is in such a position but it's another question quite another question you simply despise her seeing a fact which you mistakenly consider deserving of contempt you refuse to take a humane view of a fellow-creature you don't know what a character she is i am only sorry that of late she has quite given up reading and borrowing books i used to lend them to her i am sorry too that with all the energy and resolution and protesting which she has already shown once she has little self-reliance little so to say independence so as to break free from certain prejudices and certain foolish ideas yet she thoroughly understands some questions for instance about kissing of hands that is that it's an insult to a woman for a man to kiss her hand because it's a sign of inequality we had a debate about it and i described it to her she listened attentively to an account of the workmen's associations in france too now i am explaining the question of coming into the room in the future society and what's that pray we had a debate lately on the question has a member of the community the right to enter another member's room whether man or woman at any time and we decided that he has it might be at an inconvenient moment <laughs> lebeziatnikov was really angry you are always thinking of something unpleasant he cried with aversion foo how vexed i am that when i was expounding our system i referred prematurely to the question of personal privacy it's always a stumbling block to people like you they turn it into ridicule before they understand it and how proud they are of it too foo i've often maintained that that question should not be approached by a novice till he has a firm faith in the system and tell me please what do you find so shameful even in cesspools i should be the first to be ready to clean out any cesspool you like and it's not a question of self-sacrifice it's simply work honourable useful work 
which is as good as any other and much better than the work of a raphael and a pushkin because it is more useful and more honourable more honourable <laughs> what do you mean by more honourable i don't understand such expressions to describe human activity more honourable nobler all those are old-fashioned prejudices which i reject everything which is of use to mankind is honourable i only understand one word useful you can snigger as much as you like but that's so pyotr petrovitch laughed heartily he had finished counting the money and was putting it away but some of the notes he left on the table the cesspool question had already been a subject of dispute between them what was absurd was that it made lebeziatnikov really angry while it amused luzhin and at that moment he particularly wanted to anger his young friend it's your ill luck yesterday that makes you so ill-humoured and annoying blurted out lebeziatnikov who in spite of his independence and his protests did not venture to oppose pyotr petrovitch and still behaved to him with some of the respect habitual in earlier years you better tell me this pyotr petrovitch interrupted with haughty displeasure can you or rather are you really friendly enough with that young person to ask her to step in here for a minute i think they've all come back from the cemetery i heard the sound of steps i want to see her that young person what for lebeziatnikov asked with surprise oh i want to i am leaving here to-day or to-morrow and therefore i wanted to speak to her about however you may be present during the interview it's better you should be indeed for there's no knowing what you might imagine i shan't imagine anything i only asked and if you've anything to say to her nothing is easier than to call her in i'll go directly and you may be sure i won't be in your way five minutes later lebeziatnikov came in with sonya she came in very much surprised and overcome with shyness as usual she was always shy in such circumstances and was always afraid of new people she had been as a child and was even more so now pyotr petrovitch met her politely and affably but with a certain shade of his bantering familiarity which in his opinion was suitable for a man of his respectability and weight in dealing with a creature so young and so interesting as she he hastened to reassure her and made her sit down facing him at the table sonya sat down looked about her at lebeziatnikov at the notes lying on the table and then again at pyotr petrovitch and her eyes remained riveted on him lebeziatnikov was moving to the door pyotr petrovitch signed to sonya to remain seated and stop lebeziatnikov is raskolnikov in there has he come he asked him in a whisper raskolnikov yes why yes he is there i saw him just come in why well i particularly beg you to remain here with us and not to leave me alone with this young woman i only want a few words with her but god knows what they may make of it i shouldn't like raskolnikov to repeat anything you understand what i mean i understand lebeziatnikov saw the point yes you are right of course i am convinced personally that you have no reason to be uneasy but still you are right certainly i'll stay i'll stand here at the window and not be in your way i think you are right pyotr petrovitch returned to the sofa sat down opposite sonya looked attentively at her and assumed an extremely dignified even severe expression as much as to say don't you make any mistake madam sonya was overwhelmed with embarrassment in the first place sofya semyonovna will you make my excuses to your respected mamma that's right isn't it katerina ivanovna stands in the place of a mother to you pyotr petrovitch began with great dignity though affably it was evident that his intentions were friendly quite so yes the place of a mother sonya answered timidly and hurriedly then will you make my apologies to her through inevitable circumstances i am forced to be absent and shall not be at the dinner in spite of your mamma's kind invitation yes i'll tell her at once and sonya hastily jumped up from her seat wait that's not all pyotr petrovitch detained her smiling at her simplicity and ignorance of good manners and you know me little my dear sofya semyonovna if you suppose i would have ventured to trouble a person like you for a matter of so little consequence affecting myself only i have another object sonya sat down hurriedly her eyes rested again for an instant on the grey and rainbow-coloured notes that remained on the table but she quickly looked away and fixed her eyes on pyotr petrovitch she felt it horribly indecorous especially for her to look at another person's money she stared at the gold eyeglass which pyotr petrovitch held in his left hand 
and at the massive and extremely handsome ring with a yellow stone on his middle finger but suddenly she looked away and not knowing where to turn ended by staring pyotr petrovitch again straight in the face after a pause of still greater dignity he continued i chanced yesterday in passing to exchange a couple of words with katerina ivanovna poor woman that was sufficient to enable me to ascertain that she is in a position preternatural if one may so express it yes preternatural sonya hurriedly assented or it would be simpler and more comprehensible to say ill yes simpler and more comprehend yes ill quite so so then from a feeling of humanity and so to speak compassion i should be glad to be of service to her in any way foreseeing her unfortunate position i believe the whole of this poverty-stricken family depends now entirely on you allow me to ask sonya rose to her feet did you say something to her yesterday of the possibility of a pension because she told me you had undertaken to get her one was that true not in the slightest and indeed it's an absurdity i merely hinted at her obtaining temporary assistance as the widow of an official who had died in the service if only she has patronage but apparently your late parent had not served his full term and had not indeed been in the service at all of late in fact if there could be any hope it would be very ephemeral because there would be no claim for assistance in that case far from it and she is dreaming of a pension already <laughs> a go-ahead lady yes she is for she is credulous and good-hearted and she believes everything from the goodness of her heart and 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 she is like that yes you must excuse her said sonya and again she got up to go but you haven't heard what i have to say no i haven't heard muttered sonya then sit down she was terribly confused she sat down again a third time seeing her position with her unfortunate little ones i should be glad as i have said before so far as lies in my power to be of service that is so far as is in my power not more one might for instance get up a subscription for her or a lottery something of the sort such as is always arranged in such cases by friends or even outsiders desirous of assisting people it was of that i intended to speak to you it might be done yes yes god will repay you for it faltered sonya gazing intently at pyotr petrovitch it might be but we will talk of it later we might begin it to-day we will talk it over this evening and lay the foundation so to speak come to me at seven o'clock mr lebeziatnikov i hope will assist us but there is one circumstance of which i ought to warn you beforehand and for which i venture to trouble you sofya semyonovna to come here in my opinion money cannot be indeed it's unsafe to put it into ekaterina ivanovna's own hands the dinner to-day is a proof of that though she has not so to speak a crust of bread for to-morrow and well boots or shoes or anything she has bought to-day jamaica rum and even i believe madeira and and coffee i saw it as i passed through to-morrow it will all fall upon you again they won't have a crust of bread it's absurd really and so to my thinking a subscription ought to be raised so that the unhappy widow should not know of the money but only you for instance am i right i don't know this is only to-day once in her life she was so anxious to do honour to celebrate the memory and she is very sensible but just as you think and i shall be very very they will all be and god will reward and the orphans sonya burst into tears very well then keep it in mind and now will you accept for the benefit of your relation the small sum that i am able to spare from me personally i am very anxious that my name should not be mentioned in connection with it here having so to speak anxieties of my own i cannot do more and pyotr petrovitch held out to sonya a ten-rouble note carefully unfolded sonya took it flushed crimson jumped up muttered something and began taking leave pyotr petrovitch accompanied her ceremoniously to the door she got out of the room at last agitated and distressed and returned to katerina ivanovna overwhelmed with confusion all this time lebeziatnikov had stood at the window or walked about the room anxious not to interrupt the conversation when sonya had gone he walked up to pyotr petrovitch and solemnly held out his hand i heard and saw everything he said laying stress on the last verb that is honourable i mean to say it's humane you wanted to avoid gratitude i saw and although i cannot i confess in principle sympathize with private charity for it not only fails to eradicate the evil but even promotes it yet i must admit that i saw your action with pleasure yes yes i like it that's all nonsense muttered pyotr petrovitch somewhat disconcerted 
looking carefully at lebeziatnikov no it's not nonsense a man who has suffered distress and annoyance as you did yesterday and who yet can sympathize with the misery of others such a man even though he is making a social mistake is still deserving of respect i did not expect it indeed of you pyotr petrovitch especially as according to your ideas oh what a drawback your ideas are to you how distressed you are for instance by your ill luck yesterday cried the simple-hearted lebeziatnikov who felt a return of affection for pyotr petrovitch and what do you want with marriage with legal marriage my dear noble pyotr petrovitch why do you cling to this legality of marriage well you may beat me if you like but i am glad positively glad it hasn't come off that you are free that you are not quite lost for humanity you see i've spoken my mind because i don't want in your free marriage to be made a fool of and to bring up another man's children that's why i want legal marriage luzhin replied in order to make some answer he seemed preoccupied by something children you referred to children lebeziatnikov started off like a war-horse at the trumpet call children are a social question and a question of first importance i agree but the question of children has another solution some refuse to have children altogether because they suggest the institution of the family we'll speak of children later but now as to the question of honour i confess that's my weak point that horrid military pushkin expression is unthinkable in the dictionary of the future what does it mean indeed it's nonsense there will be no deception in a free marriage that is only the natural consequence of a legal marriage so to say it's corrective a protest so that indeed it's not humiliating and if i ever to suppose an absurdity were to be legally married i should be positively glad of it i should say to my wife my dear hitherto i have loved you now i respect you for you've shown you can protest you laugh that's because you are incapable of getting away from prejudices confound it all i understand now where the unpleasantness is of being deceived in a legal marriage but it's simply a despicable consequence of a despicable position in which both are humiliated when the deception is open as in a free marriage then it does not exist it's unthinkable your wife will only prove how she respects you by considering you incapable of opposing her happiness and avenging yourself on her for her new husband damn it all i sometimes dream if i were to be married foo i mean if i were to marry legally or not it's just the same i should present my wife with a lover if she had not found one for herself my dear i should say i love you but even more than that i desire you to respect me see am i not right pyotr petrovitch sniggered as he listened but without much merriment he hardly heard it indeed he was preoccupied with something else and even lebeziatnikov at last noticed it pyotr petrovitch seemed excited and rubbed his hands lebeziatnikov remembered all this and reflected upon it afterwards end of part five chapter one recording by expatriate in bangor maine